Say hello to the new motorcycle. What's going on everyone? Back with another episode of Stuff and Things and it is finally time to say hello to my new bike. Out of all of the guesses that you guys put out there, I am very surprised that no one guessed this exact bike. Some people thought I might go back to a sport bike, some other people were saying cruisers, and a couple of you did guess a supermoto like this. But no one guessed the exact model, so this is my 2018 Suzuki DRZ 400 SM. If you have ever looked into supermotos or the sumo community, you will know that these bikes are super popular for very good reasons. And I'm not going to go super into depth into this bike, however I will go over some of the few modifications that I've already done to it. Like any new motorcycle, or any new toy for that matter, that I buy, I end up ripping off all of the ugly, unwanted stuff. So the first thing to go was obviously all of the reflectors, the disgusting undertail, and all of the typical compliance stuff that comes on new motorcycles. The first mod that I did was add these Pro Taper pillow top grips. They are very, very comfortable, especially when compared right next to the stock grips. This was actually not the easiest thing to do. The clutch side I had just cut off with a razor and then slipped the new one on with some grip glue. But then on the throttle side, the stock grip was actually glued to the throttle tube. I found this out after I had already cut up the stock grip, so I went out, purchased a new throttle tube, and then pieced everything back together. The next thing that I did, and which I do to all of my bikes, is I got rid of the massive undertail. I chose to go with the TST Industries Integrated Tail Light Kit. This includes the light itself, the turns integrated into the tail light, and all of the wiring. I also added their plate light kit to keep this thing somewhat legal because the plate is relocated now all the way up underneath the tail. To go along with the LED integrated tail light, I also decided to put LEDs up front. I went with the Zeta Armor handguards, which include LED blinkers in the handguards themselves. Not only does this make the bike look better, but it also will protect my hands if I ever take this thing off-road and ride it in some tight trees. Also on the front end, you may recognize this headlight from another very popular bike. This is actually a headlight off of a KTM. The DRZs have been around for a long time and really not a whole lot has changed on them, and that's including the design. The headlight that originally came with this bike, it looks like it came straight out of the 90s. That of course is not really my style, so I upgraded to the KTM headlight kit. I did keep the stock bulb so everything functions as normal, but in the future I think I might upgrade that to either an LED or an HID. Also up front I added a new fender which was very easy to install, and this was just another thing to kind of clean up the aesthetics of the bike. The stock fender is of course very long, so this kind of shortened things up and makes the whole bike look a lot cleaner. So this is what I'm working with now, not a whole lot has changed other than the aesthetics of the bike, but I will get into power mods in the future. Now like I promised you guys, I said once I get a new bike I would try out moto vlogging for the first time, so let me strap on my helmet and we'll go for a ride. Alright guys, check check. How we looking, how we sounding? I think everything seems to be working okay. Finally got the moto vlogging helmet set up and I think it's working consistently so should be able to put in a nice ride and talk a little bit more about my 2018 DRZ. So right off the bat there are definitely some pros and cons to buying a motorcycle like this. I'm gonna start off with the cons right away because I know there are probably already people in the comment section going, oh, why'd you go with the DRZ? You could have went with this, you could have went with that, blah, blah, blah. So I'm gonna start off by saying this. There are no manufacturers out there that make a perfect supermoto that you can buy right from the showroom floor. In an ideal world, a company, Honda, Suzuki, Kawasaki, somebody should make a supermoto with a couple of these criteria crossed off. One, it should be lightweight with a preferably aluminum frame, which this is not. DRZs are known for being heavy and that's just the way it is. Two, a supermoto should have a six speed gearbox. DRZ does not, this is only five speed. Three, the bike should be fuel injected. Most bikes in 2018 are fuel injected, except the DRZ of course. Four, the bike should be easy to maintain, very similar to a sport bike or any other cruiser for that matter, and that the DRZ does have going for it. You basically just need to check the filters, change the oil, the oil filter every so often. I'm actually coming up to 600 miles on this new bike already, so probably next week sometime you will see an oil change video here on the channel. So a supermoto that can come off of the showroom floor meeting at minimum those four criteria, of course with wheels and street tires, I believe it should come in around the $10,000 mark, hopefully even less than that. 
The thing is though, there is no company that makes something that meets that criteria. Oh, watch out, we got some flooding up here. Pennsylvania has been nothing but flooded lately, so there's water all over the place. Now there are a bunch of different options that I could have gone with. I was actually looking at KTMs. The thing with that though is that the maintenance on those are insane. I don't want to be changing the oil every five hours and checking valves and things like that. I want a bike that looks good, performs well, and I can rely on with basically low maintenance, changing tires and oil. Now it may seem like I just ripped on this bike completely, just listed nothing but cons, but at the same time, I love this bike. I love the motorcycle. I've been riding bikes for a long, long time. And I think in the future, I'll do a video kind of talking about my motorcycle past. But until then, I really wish I would have had a supermoto back when I was 16 years old. So I went from my 2015 Grom, bought this, and then sold the Grom, and basically it's because I was riding the Grom like a supermoto. I would say here where I live, I'm about 90% on-road and 10% off-road, so of course I would ride the Grom wherever I could in a small radius, and then if I could take it off-road, I absolutely would. You guys have already seen that in videos in the past. So a Grom is basically like a downsized supermoto, or you could say that this bike is like an upscale Grom. A 400 is in a whole lot of power because I'm used to bigger bikes that I've ridden in the past. However, when you're going from 125 cc's up to 400, just this little bit of extra power that I have is very, very nice. I'm happy to be back on a bigger bike like this. The way this thing corners is so sick. I never really grew up riding dirt bikes. I've been used to sport bikes and how you are supposed to handle those in turns and stuff like that. Supermotos are very different. I'm not gonna be leaning off of the motorcycle, dipping into a left-hand turn, throwing my helmet down towards the corner and looking where I'm going. You kinda wanna position yourself up on top of the bike. It's just a little bit different. I'm still getting used to it, but man, I can rip this thing around. Check this out. They put in a traffic circle in the middle of this intersection. What are we, in Europe? Don't know where this guy's going. Use your turn signal, thank you. So back to my main point, there are not many manufacturers out there who make a decent supermoto right from the get-go. So after weighing all my options, this was definitely my best bet. The price point was great, relatively low maintenance, and it is a ton of fun. All of the modifications that you have already seen are obviously just for aesthetic purposes. Yes, these up here are functional as well, and in the rear, stuff like that is functional, but no performance upgrades just yet. I wouldn't really say that this bike is a slouch right from the start. I mean, it is obviously very restrictive with all of the compliance bullshit that manufacturers have to include with these bikes. So in the future, after I get through the first oil change and break in the bike a little bit better, I will probably end up going with a different exhaust, doing the 3x3 mod, and a different carburetor as well. I'm really not in a hurry to do any of that because, like I said, the bike is still kind of being broken in, and it has enough power. Could it have more power? Yes, 100%, and it would be a lot more fun to ride if it had a little bit more, but I'm not really in a hurry to get that power and squeeze it out of the bike. I mean, let's try this. Third gear wheelies on a stock bike. You can pull it up pretty damn easy. Now, if I had a little bit of extra power, that would be much easier to bring up to the balance point and kind of ride out a little bit longer, but it is what it is. Like I said, very happy with the bike so far. So other than that, I don't plan on going too crazy with the bike. Like I said, a couple power mods. I'm happy with the way this thing looks aesthetically already, but I think I should let you guys vote on a wrap job for this. I love the gold wheels, I love the black, that's why I went with black handguards and headlight and fender and everything. But I know there is a place fairly local to me that does complete wrap jobs, so maybe some of you guys who are artistic out there could design something and we could vote on it in the future. Just an idea that I had. If not, I'll probably just come up with something myself or leave it the way it is. I mean, I think the bike looks good. The one thing is for the 2018 DRZs, they pretty much only come in this colorway. Every dealership in the area has this exact bike. It's not the end of the world after everything that I've already put on this bike. It kind of makes it stand out a little bit and that's really what riding motorcycles is about. Just getting out here and enjoying yourself. 
ripping some twisties like these. Damn, I really miss riding bikes, man. So yeah, maybe in the future, the only other thing that I'll do is get a little crazy with the wrap job. I shouldn't even say that. Every time that I say I'm not gonna modify something that I buy, I end up getting wicked with it. So I'm not even gonna say that. I'm probably gonna do a lot more shit to this bike. I just don't know what or when. So I guess that's gonna be it for today. I just wanted to get this video out there so I could actually show you guys the bike so you're not waiting around. I know a lot of you were curious and now hopefully this satisfied some of you because I know there are a lot of Supermoto fans out there. Let me know what you guys think about the bike in the description down below or if you have nothing good to say then just f off. I don't care what you have to say because I love this bike. I hope you guys liked my first moto vlog. If you did slap a like on it I got a lot more of these coming because I tend to ride a lot, so that means more videos for you guys. If you're new to this channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week, and that's going to be all for today. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.